Hello guys, Ancient Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and today we have the second news video on this channel. I'm kind of new to this so sorry in advance for anything that you think that it's not appropriate or anything else but I, I, I sincerely don't care. And well, I'll be reading a bit, I don't have the, um, the panel on the back so I can't read, I'll be reading a bit here. But well, let's now go to the part that really matters. So today we had the AMD New Horizon event and well, and they just revealed the new specs of the upcoming Zen 2 CPUs, which is awesome. And well, if you are one of those guys who thought that the difference between Zen Plus and Zen 2 would be small, well, AMD says otherwise. Let's put clear all the known changes. So improved execution pipeline, doubled floating point, 256 bit instead of the 128 bits on the Zen Plus on the Zen Plus sorry my French K took over in this case the Portuguese but it sounded like French doesn't matter and load store data double bandwidth of course doubled core density we'll talk about this later off the energy per operation because of the 7 nanometers versus the global foundries 12 nanometers improved branch prediction better instruction prefetching Reoptimize instruction cache, large op cache, increase dispatch and retire bandwidth, and maintaining high throughput for all modes. We're also looking at big improvements, major improvements in fact, on cache side, with lower latencies and better prefetching, which will make the cache even more efficient. The op cache is also bigger, so the op cache stores recently decoded instructions lots of them <laughs> so that they don't have to be decoded again for example in the event uh, they are being repeated for example loops repeated calls and that's what and repeated calls and etc etc the simple explanation for this is that the repeated decoded instructions don't need to pass through some steps let's say of the pipelines which means more efficient work so having a bigger op cache is always great. Well, another great thing is that Zen 2 has doubled core density. So we are looking at two times the cores on the same core complex, so CCX. We are looking twice the cores, so one CCX on the previous generations would be up to four cores, while on Zen 2 we'll have up to eight cores. For example, Ryzen 5 1600 and Ryzen 5 2600 have six cores, and 12 threads like everyone knows and since Zen and Zen Plus offers a max of 4 cores for each CCX that means we are looking at 2 CCX of 3 cores each. Cores will have to send and receive operations from ones to others and that increases and adds, not increases but that adds latency of course since the data is bouncing from one CCX to other. And well with this new core density on the CCX, we can have up to 8 cores on the same CCX, which means that in this case Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7, if they keep the, the same cores and thread number, they will have only one CCX. That means that the, the latency, the added latency from the previous generations will be eliminated. We'll, we'll keep, we'll keep, no, we'll, hmm. it will be eliminated and we'll have um, exponential boost in some case scenarios. So basically we'll have an improvement on IPC performance, lower latencies and an even better multi-threading performance. This at the same clocks as the previous generations of course. And this is where the 7 nanometers TSMC node kicks in. Imagine overall of what we've seen before we'll have also higher clocks and lower power consumption. My prediction is that Zen 2 will finally match Intel's 9th generation IPC and will outmatch Intel counterparts in multi-threaded work. Not even talking about price performance ratio, which AMD is already winning by some small margin, some small margin, yeah. Another thing about this event is that AMD also talked about the AMD Epic ROM series which will have all the improvements we talked about before and use two chiplets which will be connected by a large input-output die. And due to the double core density, a single chiplet 
will support up to 64 cores and 128 threads. Holy motherfucking shit! 128 threads in a single chiplet. This all together with faster 8 channel memory lanes. Well, AMD even showed the benchmark of one socket Epichrome versus a dual socket Xeon 8180M. Let's watch it. And so what we have here, uh, again, on the left is Intel running the C-Ray benchmark, rendering, rendering in the CPU three iterations of uh, the C-Ray image, and then the same running over here on Rome. And what you'll see again is one versus two, it's not a fair fight, I'm afraid to say, because one, it has much better TCO, better power efficiency, better cost of ownership, completes ahead of the best dual socket that Intel has to offer. Today. Yeah, guys, the one socket epic costing less and with way less power draw one versus a dual socket Xeon. Thirty point two seconds for Xeon dual socket versus twenty eight dot one. Yes, twenty eight dot one seconds for the one socket Epic CPU. Also, the Epic CPU is not using a mini fridge or, technically speaking, a chiller. Bam Intel. So concluding on Zen 2, on Ryzen, for example, Ryzen 3rd generation, will have higher IPC, higher simultaneous multi-threading performance, will also have less latencies, higher frequencies and lower power draw. This is a major leap from the Zen Plus generation, so lots of redesigned things and improved things and overall better performance, lower power draw. So we'll have um, matching, matching or maybe overtaking Intel's 9th generation performance um, at lower power draw, I can guarantee that, at lower power draw at least. Intel has hit a wall on, on their architecture a long time ago. Let's say like at Skylake. Skylake was the wall and they managed to, let's say, put a ladder and maybe go up one or two steps, but they can't go higher and they can't reduce it to 10 nanometers. They need a new architecture and they know it, of course. They want to do it, but they are not, um, they, they are not doing it well and they are trying to do it, but they are failing. And that's, uh, that's bad, of course. You may say that's good because, well, AMD is now winning, but it's not good, it's never good, we need competition on the market, we need Intel and AMD to be strong and to compete with each other so we can have progress. Because, well, Intel had the lead for several years and what have you seen of progress? Zero. Two years ago before Ryzen, Ryzen first generation was launched, Intel was saying, four cores is more than enough. Four cores is more than enough for gaming and for everything that you need. And now Intel is like playing the core games that AMD was playing on the past because they can't go further on IPC and they can't go further on um, the frequency, which will of course mess with the IPC too. But that's the point, they can't go further on the IPC, they can't go further on the, the HD, the, um, the hyper-threading performance and they can't go further um, on, the, on the frequency, so they are going to the core games. The thing is, AMD with this step will be side by side to them, and if they don't continue to evolve, AMD will overtake, more than they, they are overtaking now with their price performance ratio, and that is not good at all. We need competition like I said before. Sorry for anything, I'm not really uh, used to do this. Uh, to do this kind of videos, news things, but I really, I really wanted to do it because I felt like I need to do this video because I am really excited for these new, these new CPUs and on the server market, mostly because AMD Epic is killing completely the Z online, and so I'm really excited to see the times we have ahead. 
As for the, um, the graphic cards, well, if you want to see more of these news, of these Zen, uh, Zen 2 news and graphic cards news with uh, the Vega 20, for example, go to WCCF Tech because they have awesome articles on this issue, on this, well, on this thing, <laughs> on this news, anyway. So, thanks a lot for watching, don't forget, hit like, subscribe and share the video because that helps a lot. And well, see you in the next one. Bye.